All right, uh, so today, uh, Brother Lee Eckert is going to uh, kick off our program uh, for uh, on behalf of GEARS. So Lee is in his second year as the GEARS program coordinator. Lee is a 2011 graduate of Penfield High School. Now I feel old as well. And a 2015 graduate of Elizabethtown College. Really feel old now, where he was a member of the men's basketball team. Uh, currently, Lee is the head boys basketball coach at Elizabethtown Area High School. Lives in Mount Joy with his wife, Rachel, and their son, Brooks. Uh, David Wendell, uh, also one of our brethren here, will also be joining Lee. Apologize, I did not get a chance to ask you for your bio, but I'll let you handle that. So please join uh, Coach Lee and Coach Dave. Thanks for having us today. Really appreciate it. So, do you want to introduce yourself? My name is David Wendell. I'm the executive director of Gears. And uh, Coach Ecker called me off the bench today to help out with this presentation. So, uh, I'm going to fill in a little bit here and there of some things that uh, probably you're already aware of because Gears has a long history in Elizabethtown uh, and in the community as well as with uh, the Rotary Club. So, uh, I'll provide you with some. Yep, so David's going to get started. A um, little bit of our background, our partners, and who we work with. So as I mentioned, can everyone hear me fine? Yes. Yeah. So Gears has a long history uh, in this community. Um, I will say that our success is really predicated on the partnerships that we have within the community. And I just wanted to uh, use this time to recognize some of our partners to help uh, uh, maintain GEARS operations. So some of you may already be familiar with how GEARS operates. We have a partnership with uh, three municipalities, West Donegal Township, Elizabethtown Borough, and Mount Joy Township. Uh, they are part of the GEARS agreement and they help support our operating budget. So our operating budget is covered Currently, up to 18% of our operating budget is covered by our municipal partners. So Gears is charged with recovering the other 82% of that budget. In 2023, that'll go up to 20%. Uh, I have to say, uh, working with our municipal partners has been a joy. Um, I started in this position at the start of the pandemic, which is one of the first peaks of the pandemic in May of 2020. So working with them, and addressing some of the um, uh, issues that we were confronted with as a result of the pandemic, they've been great. And uh, so they're part of the GEARS agreement. We also have the Elizabethtown Area Community Services Authority. That entity owns the GEARS Community Center and the surrounding po uh, property known as Poplar Street Park. So the GEARS Community Center is approximately 29,000 square feet and the area around it known as Poplar Street Park is about 10 acres. We do not own that property. It's owned by the three municipalities I just mentioned that are part of the Gears agree Agreement, as well as Kanoi Township. And over the past couple of years, um, they have really stepped up to help with covering the expenses related to the maintenance of that building. It's a building that's nearly 100 years old, and as a result, there are a number of things that we need to do to, to maintain it in order to provide the services, uh, our recreation services, child care services, and senior center uh, programs. So the other partnership that we have within the community is with the Elizabethtown Area School District. We provide child care services out of their facilities where their preferred child care provider and uh, we also have an agreement with them. So we have a number of agreements. We have the GEARS agreement which consists of the three municipalities that I mentioned that cover uh, a portion of our operating costs. We have the uh, Elizabethtown Area Community Services Authority, which is the owner of the building and helps us maintain it. And then we have uh, the uh, child care agreement through the Elizabethtown Area uh, School District, which enables us to provide services in their schools. So that's um, uh, an overview of the partnerships that really help um, 
us to operate as Gears. I will tell you that without these partnerships, Gears would probably not exist. Uh, we're not self-funding uh, where we'd be able to cover all of our costs. So to have them involved is really key. Um, also, something that we're really excited about that I want to mention is that in 2023, um, East Donegal Township will be joining Gears. Uh, that's a community of over 8,000 residents, and so we're really pleased that they're going to become part of the, the GEARS agreement in 2023. That enables us to expand our service area and serve more folks and provide uh, additional recreation activities that, um, that we're not able to, to provide currently. Does anyone have any questions with our partnerships? I'm sorry, I know that usually takes place at the end, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, those are the partnerships that we have. And, and of course, we also partner with many businesses in the community, uh, civic organizations like the Rotary Club, churches. Uh, again, they're very, uh, they're invaluable to, to our existence here uh, in this area. As far as the services we provide, um, administration, we, we, we really are lean in our operations. Um, administration includes our finances, uh, human resources, the management of the community center. We don't necessarily have individuals that are dedicated to those specific uh, functions. They are carried on by myself as the executive director and some other support staff. Um, the recreation part of it, again, a, a very diverse menu of programs that we offer in the community. Uh, we currently reach over 30,000 folks uh, that are part of the GEARS agreement. Once East Donegal Township joins, we'll be serving upwards of 40,000 folks in the community. So, um, again, we, our, our recreation services are very well known in the community. We actually have our annual fall festival next Saturday. Some of you may be familiar with that event, as well as the holiday parade in December. So, it's, it's a variety of programs and events that we provide. Our child care services I mentioned earlier, we currently serve uh, approximately 150 students. So we offer a before and after school program and that's conducted out of the uh, Elizabethtown Area School District facilities. We also have preschool and kindergarten programs and then we operate a summer camp program uh, which this past year was held at East High uh, and it's been held at Bear Creek as well. Um, and then finally, we provide senior center services. I'm not sure if all of you are aware, but the Elizabethtown Borough Senior Center operates out of the Gears Community Center. And we serve approximately 40 people a day. Um, we provide structured activities. Uh, we also provide meals. Uh, we work with Meals on Wheels, and we also provide a variety of other services to meet the needs of that population. And finally, the community center. Uh, during the pandemic, we did not make it available uh, for community use, but it has been available in the past for groups that want to use it for special events. Uh, we also partner with the Elizabethtown Boys Club. They utilize our facilities, specifically our outdoor facilities for baseball and football. And that's another, <laughs> another organization that we have an agreement with. Um, where they uh, provide some of the maintenance and cover some of the administrative costs of uh, GEARS uh, maintaining those areas as well. So those are the services that we provide. And, uh, and again, I want to thank the Rotary Club because without your support, we would not, as well as the other organizations that uh, serve GEARS or support GEARS, we would not be able to continue um, our long history, which is... Uh, well over 40 years here in the community. Perfect, so I'm gonna hit on, um, so my role is uh, program coordinator, so mainly rec and special events. Um, like David said, our fall festival next week and the holiday parade are two examples, but um, we offer, what I like about this job, it's literally, you know, we have three-year-olds playing soccer on Saturday mornings and we have the senior center um, the egg hunt, so it hits everybody in the community, which is awesome. Um, but our big thing, um, just kind of go through some of our major programs. Our aquatics program, 
Uh, so we do our gear swim lessons, again, in facilities at Elderstown College, should take advantage of that. Uh, we're hoping for January 2023 to get back into Masonic Village and offer a lot of aerobics classes. Um, swimming is definitely one of the biggest things. I joined Gears as an employee last year, and I'd say at least once a day I get a phone call, like, when are those swim lessons starting? When is this starting? So definitely one of our major programs. Uh, but also continuing education, right? Some people think Gears, and it's the itty bitties, soccer, basketball, things like that. Um, but we have Medicare's, Wills, Trust and Estates. Uh, we do offer canine classes, um, ARP driver classes. So those are hosted at our community center. Um, and we give discounts through ARP uh, for their insurance. Um, another big thing we do, we are currently partnered with the Marriage Hub, which is the old moose, um, green, <coughs> excuse me, fighting dragons, and Masonic Village, and we offer a ton of spin. This is just a few uh, yoga, spin, Zumba Gold, which is very, very popular. We host at our community center. Uh, and pounds. So just a kind of a preview. We're always looking for new ideas or new fitness classes. Obviously, there's a lot of trends in the fitness world. Um, league tournaments, we drive by Tuesday, Wednesday nights, uh, the community park. We have our softball league currently going on uh, next Tuesday and Wednesday. Wednesday night will be the playoffs. So if you're looking for some competitive softball, um, it's a pretty competitive league. And then we just had our golf tournament last Friday at Dolphin Highlands. That's one of our major fundraisers throughout the year. Uh, we definitely rely on a lot of donations, but it's kind of our way of, you know, hosting an event as well. And like we, I spoke about, um, our preschool, we call it Itty Bitty. It's kind of like our, our catch. Um, so we have Itty Bitty basketball starting up at East High. It doesn't start till December 3rd, but it's pretty much already full. So those classes are very, very popular. Um, again, Saturday morning at the fairgrounds, uh, we have Itty Bitty soccer, so they'll be there tomorrow morning. And then dance, tennis, gymnastics, um, as you can see there. So just a couple different things we offer. Some other events and pictures, just to kind of, so it's, you know, I think rec, just sports, things like that, but definitely continue education. Uh, the bottom right corner here, that's one of our camps we offer. Um, it's actually pretty cool. It's called CSI E-Town. Um, so it's a science camp held at the high school um, a week long, and they do uh, figure out crimes and make tie-dye t-shirts and explain the science behind it. Um, and then obviously we offer adult recreation, like the volleyball league, um, our youth basketball program, which is our biggest program. And then the one I like in the middle, um, so we have mother and son bowling, events like that, um, very popular, our daddy-daughter dance. Um, we're still looking for a venue for that for this year. Um, but you know, the, the dads, you know, very important to us, our community, spending time with their daughters, and they kind of treat it like a mini prom. The girls will get their hair done. The dads dress up begrudgingly from what I've seen. Um, but once they're there, you know, for your daughters to spend the night, it's, it's a really cool event to see. Um, and then we also participate, our middle school volleyball program has been very successful and they uh, play in the league at Spooky Nook. Uh, just a couple more things. Um, <clears throat> our special events, so obviously everybody, here, I believe is familiar with our egg extravaganza. We have the egg, where's Mr. I think he left. Um, the egg master, he helps us a lot for our egg extravaganza, which is our free uh, community egg hunt in the park we run each year. Uh, I guess I can break the news now that this year, um, Fun Ford is being demolished and rebuilt, so it won't be uh, ready in time. So we're actually gonna host that at the fairgrounds this year for our egg extravaganza. Uh, Movies in the Park is a cool event. If you ever drive by during the summer, um, we just have a free movie of the night, you know, popcorn, sodas, uh, everybody comes out. And then our holiday parade, which is sponsored by Mars this year, should be a really cool event. Uh, we already have 40 elements committed at this point, which is not till December 10th, so we're looking for a big, big uh, turnout for that as well. And then <clears throat> a couple more things here. Our summer program um, is kind of, it golfs our whole summer, so this past summer we had uh, four different sites, the E-Town Park, uh, Ebic Church, Marietta Borough, and then East Donical Township. We had a site as well at Furman Park. So, um, you know, our big thing at Gears is we just want to make things very affordable. So for six weeks, for, excuse me, for eight weeks throughout the summer, our summer playground program, it's only $70 for the whole summer for kids to go. So, and that's kind of pop in, you have your own vacation, you know, it doesn't matter, you can come any day you want. Um, so that's a really cool event for kids to interact, especially with COVID and kids obviously staying indoors now a day. So get them out, interacting, and playing games and things like that. And we're starting to offer bus trips again. Um, a lot of them are in New York City, um, air shows. Um, and we have a Dickinson's Christmas coming up, which is very popular as well. Um, so like David said earlier, you know, 
with our budget, it wouldn't be possible to run the things we do for our community um, without sponsorship and support. Um, obviously, there's very different ways to support financially, obviously being a major one. Um, but just speak from my experience, my first year, um, we wouldn't be able to run our events without your guys' support. So like the extravaganza and the holiday parade, um, you know, those are kind of two things, Rotary, since I've been here. I know you've been involved in past and other things like the hockey rink and the playground, but just really appreciate support for those events. Um, so this past, year, this past year, financially, um, you know, Rotary gave to the Camp Ladybug and Summer Playground program. So for those of you who probably know what Camp Ladybug is, but to me it's the fair thing we do in Elizabeth Town at years. Uh, it's a camp for people of all ages with physical or special needs and it's at Pavilion Park 5, and it's a free program uh, for everybody. So this is kind of a couple of pictures. Again, the funding we get all goes back into the program. Um, so we did a talent show on our last day, which is really fun. And our, we try to do field trips every year. This year we went to the Lancaster Science Factory. And again, cost in that, just buses and lunch and good things like that. So all the donations, everything we get, go to those programs and organizations. Um, and then just kind of hitting on the other things, um, like David mentioned earlier, so a lot of people don't know, they think gears, they think, you know, the kids center, and they think recreation, but we, our senior program is very prevalent as well throughout the day in the building. Um, so that's for residents who are 60 and older, um, and is supported by the Office of Aging, like David said. Uh, Monday through Fridays, there's no fee, you know, they appreciate a donation, but as long as you sign up for your meals, things like that, you're more than welcome to come down. Um, it's, I have fun because I walk through the halls or offices or I was in the same building and they have like a Wii Bowling Championship that they do. They won like a national award the one year. So going in there, watching it, it gets pretty competitive. They do bingo and pinochle and like it's all fun, but it's, they're competitive, which is, which is really fun. Uh, I get a quick break throughout the day. And then our service areas, so Elizabethtown, Bainbridge, Mount Joyce, Salunga, Landisville, Mayanheim, and Mastersonville, if you live in those communities, they actually bus uh, their residents into our senior center throughout the day uh, as well. So David's going to kind of hit on the Kids Center uh, a little bit here. So Kids Center, as I mentioned, uh, we operate a before and after school program out of the Elizabeth Town Area School District facilities and our kindergarten and preschool programs are held at Gears. Uh, we also provide a summer camp program for our kids. Currently we're serving, as I mentioned before, about 140 kids. Uh, we are a Keystone Stars designated program. All of our programs are four-star programs. So all of, all of our sites, we have four sites currently. Uh, they're all licensed by the Department of Human Services and they're all four-star designated, which is the highest that you can achieve. So our staff really work, out, really work hard to make sure that we're following the guidelines that they've established to provide a high quality child care program. And then the community center, as I mentioned, uh, is a 29,000 square foot building. Uh, there is quite a bit of space on the second floor that through a feasibility study that was uh, developed in 2019, uh, focuses on renovating the second floor uh, so we can expand our programming. There are seven classrooms on the second floor and that would enable us to provide more programming. Currently we have to use other facilities to provide services. So in addition to our child care program at Elizabeth Town Area School District, we also use their facilities for basketball and other types of programming. Uh, and then we, we also rent some facilities uh, within the area to provide our services. So it would not eliminate our reliance on outside facilities, but it would certainly enable us to provide more services and expand in particular our child care program because we currently have a waiting list and if we had the space and we could license that space we could serve more kids so that's something that we're working on now uh, the feasibility study to take a closer look at our existing facility and determine what we can do to expand our operations uh, Poplar Street Park that's 10 acres, as I mentioned, Elizabeth Town Boys Club. We have a relation, a partnership with them as well. Through an agreement, everything has to be through agreement. Uh, and they use those facilities pretty much year round, except for probably, 
get out of there in early November, so December, January, and February are probably the only months that you don't see any activity through their organization on those fields. And there's ball, there's free baseball fields, there's also a multi-purpose field for use with football, and it also includes a playground. The playground that we have is used by our child care program. It's licensed, uh, but it's also available, available for public use during the non-operating hours. And we operate from 6.30 to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Those are the hours for our child care program. Gears is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, I'm sorry, just, it, it includes the building, includes a, a commercial kitchen, meeting rooms, as, as we mentioned, the senior center, and there are two classrooms where we hold preschool and kindergarten programs. And there's a concession stand and approximately 90 parking spaces. So there's a lot of maintenance uh, with that building and management of the property. And even though that property is owned by the Elizabeth Town Area Community Services Authority, Gears manages and plans and coordinates all the maintenance and repairs of the building. That entity provides the funding for us to <clears throat> and then last thing here, you know, obviously being Rotarians, you know, involved, uh, get involved in the community, volunteer operations. So like we spoke earlier, you know, extravaganza this past year and the holiday parade every year, the Rotary Club uh, supports gears in those events. But just kind of want to point out a couple different uh, volunteer opportunities throughout the year that we also uh, have as available. Uh, so like I said, Camp Ladybug was a free program. Um, so for that, we rely heavily on volunteers. So each day we have anywhere from 20 to I'd say 50 participants in the camp. Um, we have paid staff, of course, but um, you know that population is very good to have one-on-one -on -one interactions. So um, a lot of retired teachers, nurses, uh, they will come and spend their time, their mornings um, at the park and have a buddy for the day. So if anybody would be interested in something like that, again, it could be one day, it could be a week, it could be a whole summer. Whatever you're looking, to, looking for, excuse me. Um, obviously, everything nowadays, thanks to Mr. Sandusky, uh, there's a ton of paperwork. So, like getting, uh, you know, basketball coaches, volunteers, we rely on Camp Ladybug. Um, there's a lot of paperwork, but once you do it once, you're done. So, um, definitely looking for volunteers for that. This Saturday, we have our fall festival, like we spoke about, the fairgrounds. Um, so, if anybody's looking to help out with that, um, we have, you know, a bunch of games that we're going to be running and. The cool thing about that event is, again, you know, we try to get community as possible. The E-Town College has their Into the Streets. Um, this weekend they have their homecoming. Uh, next weekend's the Into the Streets, so we partner with them every year. And <laughs> OT, education majors, engineering, you know, all a bunch of groups come out to our fall festival um, in Sarah Meyer Hall. And they kind of have the whole building. They offer free events for the community, which is really cool. And with that as well is the middle school um, Etown Middle School Student Council, and they also, also run a bunch of free activities. Um, and I wanted to put in here, so our Senior Center, you know, obviously that population at times, that's why they like coming to the Senior Center, they love talking, they all walk through the hallways and be in conversations, just hearing stories, which I love personally. Um, but we do have volunteers come in and kind of just help serve the lunch or come in and play games, and just, you know, just hang out and spend time. So if anybody's interested, look to do anything like that individually, I know Rotary, a little more group projects, but here's some individual uh, opportunities and volunteers as well. Um, thanks for giving us a chance to come speak today. If anybody has any questions, we'll take them at this time. Yes, sir. So you, you mentioned about the feasibility study, working on that. Is there any other big project you have in the next year that you're looking to get done? Well, we don't have anything.